Welcome back for another video. Today, we're going to be talking about some NFC West teams. We have the 49ers going into Seattle to play the Seahawks in what could be a very exciting game. Now, when you look back at what both these teams have done, you could even look at the last couple of weeks. I'll just look at this past week, week 14, the Seahawks end up losing to the Panthers. And the Seahawks, for whatever reason, their defense has just fallen apart over the last couple of weeks. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's wrong with that team. Now, obviously, you want to talk about the offensive side for the Seahawks. When you're missing Kenneth Walker, you know, that that's a pretty big deal. He's been a game changer for them this year. Not having him there hurt them. Uh, I believe DJ Dallas was also out. So Travis Homer was the number one running back for them. And in this game for the Seahawks, between Travis Homer and Geno Smith, they had 12 total carries. For 46 total yards as a team, the Seahawks as a team had 14 carries for 48 yards in this game. Now, part of that is because they were down for most of this game, probably felt the need to pass more. But again, not having Kenneth Walker there or, you know, not having your top two running backs uh, available for you is going to affect that. So this game could be a bit of an outlier. But either way, again, the Seahawks over the last couple of weeks just haven't looked right offensively. Obviously, Geno Smith, when you're turning the ball over and giving the other team opportunities, no matter who it is, they're going to have a chance in the game. Uh, you know, if, if you're giving them short fields, they're going to have a chance to score. So the Panthers putting up 30 points. The, a lot of that is because of the Geno Smith turnovers. You know, Geno Smith ended up 21-36, 264, three touchdowns, two interceptions. And this this score, 30-24, to 24, it was worse than that for the Seahawks. You know, Seahawks ended up scoring with 16 seconds left on a touchdown pass from Geno Smith to Marquise Goodwin. So th this game, most of, most of the day, this game was not this close. Uh, it felt like the Panthers were in control for most of it. The Seahawks just could not get anything going, couldn't stay on the field consistently, and and eventually it cost them. You know, at, at the end of the day, again, turnovers are a big deal, and, and it ended up costing the Seahawks. But then you go and look at the 49ers and what they've been able to do, and they've been absolutely dominant over the last couple of weeks. You know, granted, they played a Dolphins team that didn't have their top two tackles, you know, left and right tackle were both out. But nonetheless, they came out and dominated that game against the Dolphins, and they come in and absolutely dominate this game against the Buccaneers. And you look at Purdy. Brock Purdy is looking pretty damn good. You know what I'm saying? Like this game, he didn't have to do much because of rushing attack, like it does a lot of times in San Francisco, kind of carried everything. But Brock Purdy ends up 16 of 21, 185, two touchdowns. And if you have – you look at the eye test, right, if you watch any part of that game – Brock Purdy made some really good throws. Now, the 49ers are going to be missing Devo Samuel uh, probably for the year. The way that looked, he gets carted off. I believe it ended up coming out that it was an ankle injury, uh, and he's probably going to be done for the year, if I had to guess. Uh, could be less hope for the best for him, obviously. But luckily, this team went out and got CMC. They already have all the other weapons on that team. So while they're going to miss Debo Samuel for sure, they're going to be able to get by without him. And they showed that after Debo Samuel went out, and they were able to still put up points on the board, pretty much doing what they want at will in this game. Christian McCaffrey ends up with 14 carries, 119 yards, and a score. He also adds two catches for 34 and a touchdown. As a team, San Francisco ended up with over 200 rushing yards. So, so again, they were able to do what they wanted pretty much all day long here against this Buccaneers team. And I don't know who's going to be able to slow them down at this point, as good as that defense is. As good as the offense can be, like them and the Eagles are are by themselves right now, the way they're playing, right? So as if the 49ers can do it as consistently as the Eagles, and this is going to be the NFC championship. And really, there's no debating it in the NFC. It's, it's the 49ers and it's the Eagles. So with that said, we're talking about two teams in the same division, right? So in the NFC West, the Niners control that thing right now, and I think they're going to be able to control this game in Seattle. Um, I don't think it matters that it's on the road. The 49ers are a very good team. I think they'll force Geno into some more turnovers like we just saw against the Panthers. Um, I think Nick Bosa, who's putting his name in the hat for Defensive Player of the Year, very easily could be at the top of that list right now. Uh, he's going to have a huge impact in this game. You know, the rookie – Tackle is going to have a lot of work in this game. So I think the 49ers come in, dominate this game. The way they've dominated the last couple, I don't think they win. I think they dominate whatever the spread is. 
I would take the Niners to cover that spread. I would love to know who you think is going to win this game. Let me know what you think the score is going to be down in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow for more videos. Thank <laughs> you.